1913, the suffragette Emily Wilding Davison attended the Derby horse race at Epsom. As the race began, Emily positioned herself against the course barrier. Hearing the horses rounded Tattenham Corner, she stepped under the barrier and ran straight into the path of the King's horse. Four days later, 14-year-old Emily died of her injuries. Emily Wilding Davison had made the ultimate sacrifice for her commitment to the suffragette campaign, but she was not the only woman who was prepared to risk her life for the Votes for Women cause. She was just one of over a thousand suffragettes who served terms of imprisonment for militancy, including the burning and bombing of property, the smashing of windows and attacks on works of art. Three years before her death, Emily Wilding Davison was one of 80 suffragette hunger striking prisoners who embroidered their signature on the strikingly emotive banner that we have on display in the Museum of London. Behind every name is an incredible and unique life story of women who were not only prepared to dedicate their lives to fight for the right to vote, but were also prepared to endure the deprivation of imprisonment, exhausting and debilitating hunger strike, and the brutal torture of forced feeding. Jane Walton was an alias used by the suffragette Lady Constance Lytton. The German-born Kitty Marion, who combined her career as a music hall artist with her career as a suffragette militant. In 1913, she was involved in five acts of arson. Vera Wentworth was previously a shop worker. She was a member of the Young Hotbloods. This secretive group met regularly in a tea shop in the Strand to plan protests and attacks on property. Mary Lee, similarly to Emily Wilding Davidson, had given up a teaching career to dedicate her life to the suffragette cause. Mary was also the drum major of the suffragette drum and fife band that accompanied demonstrations and processions. Along with Edith New, Mary was the first suffragette to smash windows when they both threw stones at the Prime Minister's residence, 10 Downing Street, in 1908. The museum's collection of surveillance images of hunger striking suffragettes taken by an undercover photographer as the women exercised in the yard of Holloway Prison show the impact that the cycle of repeat imprisonment, hunger strike and forced feeding had on their physical and mental well-being. The press and commercial postcard publishers satirised and caricatured the suffragettes as unfeminine, ugly harridans who had abandoned their traditional roles as wife, mother and daughter. And yet the beauty of the banner that draws on traditional female skills of embroidery and sewing offers a completely alternative interpretation rather than being a symbol of militant, shrieking, hysterical females Every name on the banner tells an individual and unique story of courage, determination, commitment and unreserved loyalty and devotion, not only to the Votes for Women cause, but also to their fellow suffragettes.